I get nervous, I get awkward and funny, so welcome to the show. Um, yeah, I was up there. I can't, I don't like it when I can't look at people, so I'm just gonna talk like this for a minute. But I was up there and they're like, Karen, you can get it. I'm like, yes, we can. I was like, getting really excited because I, uh, I was having a terrible time with this bullshit that we're trying to get through charismatically as we can, right? Uh, cute, right? Charismatic. Where is that? What is that? But um, I got, I couldn't figure out how to do Wednesday, so I went and got a pedicure. And so I'm still nervous and my voice is really high in there. I'll come down in a second. Um, <laughs> uh, and, I, and I was watching, I kind of forgot my, oh, I was watching uh, TV while I was getting my pedicure. Uh, at Daisy Nails, POC on the back. Uh, Mahalo. So, um, I, and I was watching Let's Make a Deal, which is still on the air, first of all, and it's got very confusing logic. It just feels like a lot of questions all the time I couldn't follow for multiple reasons. And um, I've completely lost the reason why I'm telling this story, but um, thank you. <laughs> down like let's make a deal. Yeah. Yeah. You were like, we were there five minutes ago, thank you. Um, E.G. mentioned uh, Intellectual Property, it's a show that I was working on with, uh, with a Savage Umbrella, and uh, in that workshop series we found <coughs> characters uh, in this post-apocalyptic world, <laughs> wonder where it came up with that, um, that, uh, that have more to do with the media and how powerful it is. <laughs> Again, I'm just drawing these things out of my own mind. Um, and, uh, and how messed up our political system is. Again, you know. So I'm creative. Um, <laughs> it's a hard job being a speculative writer. Um, and so uh, what I've been working on for this, this moment here at Late Night um, is trying to find some other characters. So, this is new, this is rough, and um, I thank you for your ear. Um, one of the things that's really standing out to me right now with where we're at is that we don't have the answers. We don't really know sometimes how to like um, get out of bed, put one foot in front of the other, be nice to people. You know, the list goes on, right? Uh, tell a story about the let's make a deal thing. That was pretty easy, okay? I found a way to make it hard. Um, that's, that's kind of how I've been feeling a lot lately. Uh, and, and today, I think it's a success. I didn't take a shower, but I did put on pants. So there's a way in which if we can, we can find something every day, just try to find something or find someone, I think that's really important. Um, yeah. That's all I got. I think it's really important. Uh, and this is only 10 minutes long, so I had five minutes to banter. We're doing great. <laughs> Uh, okay, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna start with some breaths, and you're welcome to take them with you. Uh, but I really think uh, this is a really good opportunity to just kind of like we've had a lot of images in our lives lately. Um, on we're on a lot of screens all the time. I'm on a screen right now. But I think it's really important for us to just kind of like kind of let go of some of all those images. Just try to let go of some of that. So this is a show, you don't have to look at me. I'm not gonna do anything too interesting. There might be a fun hand gesture now and then. That's accident. But like, just kind of be with self for a minute. And that's good. What rises up, what comes through, work in progress. The prologue is a chorus. We begin at we, begin at end. We begin at we, begin at end. From fire to birth to the weak crutch of life to flight. In time, we are unbound, struck through, unrequired, we are reminded of our place. Place. At the rupture, a rift in the location relocated. Our GPS has been scrambled. 
towns no longer, communes, a village revisited, with oceans in our eyes for belly laughs and stars on our feet for shoes. We are a cosmic war some, in someone's dream, some rich lord's backwater after many rains in hiding, after many hungry days with many more to come. We are peoples that have been reunited, some. We are sitting around a fire. We are smoke lingering in the air after we've gone. We are here. We go on. Sanctuary, campground, commune, fireplace. Prologue says, we are after what we knew, what rises through. Begin, begin is pouring salt on the floor around their feet in a circle, readying themselves for attendance, for a kiss. Moving slowly to the sound of brushes, a stick, a hand on a drum. Slowly, begin warms their palms, offers gratitude to the earth, gestures towards the late dusk sky. The prologue says, what an adventure with you. Scene one, young Sakarik enters speaking. The nail was discovered recently by the empty frames of my shoes. Towards the end, I used it to carve my way out. I did it on my own, unforced, unashamed, unabashed, an unlit candle. I entered. Did you see those cherub devil children running down the hall? Did you see them, wings and all? The poet slid in next to me in the broken pew to whisper strands of beads, that clay, bowl, dark, dark boogie. The poet slid in next to me to whisper the blues and hymns of another man's God to me. In my ear, against my will, not this dark forest again, not again. The poet tells me they want shadows, wants me to tell you an adventure. I will. Shadows on boxes and a deserted road, a brown house whose roof is covered with something like string or a thin rope or a net, maybe. I have the small but useful crowbar I won. I have some water, too little, deep in my pack some dried apple. It is cold. I am cold. I reach in my back, but I think I see a figure towards the house. I stop. Leaves crunched underfoot as I approached only every other step. I heard something whispered from the empty trees, same noise as the city. I remembered that time it was whimpered from the building's windows that had been emptied of their glass winters before. It was so cold. Same thing when my love letters were hurled on the floor of my room after the Legion's officers demanded my manuscripts, demanded Nana materialize himself, demanded the impossible. The ant had spilled the trees out of yards, up off the street for wood, brushed me on the street and turned me around to flick me off. The legion's whispers had kicked my love letters, pulled their hair, had them bitten by dogs, scouted by owls, by crows, by drones, by something I was told never to say out loud. I heard something was whispered out of existence before I arrived. And then, my feet on the dirt, rich gravel, I remembered the bits of string tied around my wrists, my ankles, covered my mouth, and I was splayed face down in the island, tucked under a stained white sheet. If you let the poet speak, they will remember the recipe. Thin shoulders painted in fierce, shimmering burgundy layered over a deep, dark joy, a symbolic grief grilled in a caramelized marinade that sticks to your fingers or your ribs, whichever tips are your fingers, whichever bones are your fleshy parts. You try to grip anyhow till you remember words are just a membrane for the un 
apologetic mind. Behind the brown house, the words are the wild wood with low hanging branches 40 feet behind the fire ring close enough to the tops of the flames to keep an eye on them, since we can't wet them down. No water. A pile rooted half buried, a pile rooted by a half buried tin can, some empty, a few bitten, a broken down Buick back, out back that's been rusting ever since they got here. Blacked out windows, they are in there or they are outside, but they are here. I'm gonna fruit these edges. I'm gonna line them up and make them fruit, sturdy oranges, the delicate flesh of peaches, and other plump stone fruit. These edges, these frays, what a garden. Scene two. So this is after Zachary's gone into the house. Mud crusted fatigues at the foot of my bed. I can't wash them, no water. My boots are worn. It's been months. In the mirrors I see my eyes, the underparts of the flesh of them, their covers, the flimsy <coughs> nice shields between how we knew each other once, how we could know each other, and how we do. Once with feathered skirts, once with scarves, once with pleated pants, once with crew necks, once with Tim's. I hear Gideon is on the radio at the royal time. At 420 golden hour, Gideon speaks about we have an opportunity. And if we can find each other. He is not using metaphors this time. No one has known where he is for months. No one is interested. I am tired. We are tired. There are two others in this dirt house. They share quarters and a toothbrush. I wrote two letters to Nana today on bleached paper and tucked them in both in his notebook. I hope you he can hear me. Thank you. Mm.